in this video I am going to discuss how to simplify complex fractions. Um, I don't like that word because it scares students away. So we're going to call these fun fractions because I think to simplify these things, you know me, I like math. Math is fun for me, especially this, this arithmetic. So we're going we're gonna to learn how to deal with fun fractions. A fun fraction is fractions of fractions. Or another way to say it is you have a big fraction with little fractions. The book shows two methods for simplifying complex fractions, fun fractions. I'm only going to show you one way in this video. Um, to me, the way I'm going to show you in the video is the easiest way that works every single time. The way they show you in the book actually requires, uh, the other way they show you in the book requires some extra steps. Feel free to read the book, follow along the steps that they do for that problem. But I'm going to show you the method that I use. And we are going to multiply every little fraction by the LCD of the little fractions. So that is the basic that we're going to do. When I do this step, you're going to see that my little fractions all disappear, and I'm left with just a big fraction, and then we're back to a, just a simplify a rational expression type problem. So first example, 1 over x plus 2 plus 1 all over x minus 3 minus 1. So first thing I need to do is I need to find the LCD of all my little fractions. I have four little fractions here. Only two of them are showing right now, but I am going to fix it. So now I have the four little fractions. Well, the LCD is the highest power that each factor appears in the denominators of your little fractions. If necessary, factor the denominators of your little fractions. It's already done here. My LCD is going to be the 3 times x plus 2. Okay, so my LCD is 3 times x plus 2. We are going to multiply every little fraction by that LCD, and you're only multiplying the top. Okay, and I'm going to show you why this is legal. So I'm going to multiply 3 times x plus 2. I'm going to multiply this one times 3 times x plus 2. 3 x plus 2. 3 x plus 2. The reason why this is a legal operation is because I'm multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same of the big fraction by the same thing. And anything over itself is 1 except for 0. So that's why this operation is legal. Now you're going to see why I do this. I told you it would make every one of my little fractions disappear. Well, watch this. That x plus 2 cancels. Nothing cancels here. That 3 cancels. Nothing cancels here. Once you've done this step, what you're going to do is you are now going to end up with um, a little, you're going to end up with just a big fraction. So 3 times 1 is 3, plus 3x, plus 6, over x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x, minus 3x, minus 3 times 2 is minus 6. Notice I no longer have little fractions. Well, I'm going to combine like terms. 3x plus 
3 plus 6 is 9, over x squared minus x minus 6, factor, if at all possible, I'm going to factor the numerator, that's 3 times x plus 3, and then factor the denominator, two numbers that multiply to negative 6 that add to negative 1, and that would be um, x minus 3 times x plus 2. Okay, that is my final answer because nothing else cancels here. Now, one thing I want to warn you about, when we were simplifying fractions before, I said, hey, we need to take into account anything I crossed off here. Well, we also need to take into account anything that appears in the denominators of my little fraction. So when is 3, 0? Never. I've already got the x plus 2 still appearing here, so I'm good to go because nothing else canceled. You need to remember that I can't divide by 0 in that little fraction either. Okay, so multiply every little fraction by the LCD. All your little fractions disappear. Do the multiplication in the numerator and the denominator. F combine like terms. Factor if at all possible. Cancel any out common factors. Write your final answer with any restrictions on your domain. Do a couple, few more examples here. Again, factoring is very important here. I cannot emphasize that enough. In order to do any of these rational expression problems, you need to be able to factor polynomials. I have 2 over x minus 3 over 1 minus 1 over x minus 1. So my LCD, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write everything as a little fraction. My LCD is the factors that appear to the highest power. So it's going to be x and x minus 1. Multiply everything times x times x minus 1. Cancel out anything so you don't have any little fractions left. So my x's cancel out of this first one. Nothing cancels here. Nothing cancels in the lower left. And these x minus 1's cancel. In the top, I have 2 times x, 2x. 2 times negative 1 is minus 2. Negative 3x times x is negative 3x squared. Negative 3x times negative 1 would be a positive 3x. In the denominator, I have x squared minus x. And then I have negative x squared. Combine like terms, negative 3x squared. Um, 2x plus 3x is 5x minus 2 over negative x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this negative and by changing all of these signs in the numerator and the denominator. So that leaves me with 3x squared plus uh, minus 5x plus 2 over a positive x. Now I need to see if I can factor the numerator. The f I can tell you right now it's simplified because I don't have an x in common anywhere here. But as part of our regular steps, we want to continue factoring if at all possible. Do I know two numbers that multiply to 6 that add to negative 5? Yes, that would be a negative 2 and a negative 3. So I'm going to factor the top by grouping. Minus 3x minus 2x plus 2. So again, I split the middle term 
parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between the two. Find the greatest common factor of the first group, which is 3x. Do the division. 3x squared divided by 3x would be x. Negative 3x divided by 3x is minus 1. Greatest common factor of the last group is negative 2. Remember, factoring by grouping, we, if this is negative, you've got to pull the negative out. Do the division. Negative 2x divided by negative 2 is x minus 1. If these two factors are the same, you can combine your outside ones. So that would be 3x minus 2 times x minus 1. Final answer for this one would be 3x minus 2 times x minus 1 all over x. And again, the reason why we're going to want our final answers in this factored form is because this final answer that's right here is probably an intermediate step to graphing. And I need to have it in factored form in order for me to be able to find the zeros of that equation. So this, in essence, is the simplified complex fraction. But I read directions. If I tell you to put your final answer in factored form, continue doing the work to make sure that you um, are in factored form. Now, there is one thing that's missing here. Okay. Notice I crossed off this x. Well, I've still got that one there. That takes into account. I crossed off an x minus 1. I need to take that into account. I must say that x cannot equal a positive 1. Okay. Because if x was a positive 1, I'd be dividing by 0 in this little fraction. I need to take into account that x cannot be a 1 for this to be the simplified form of that fun fraction. <clears throat> Next one looks a little different. And we're going to see how this comes into play. Oh. So two more examples. This one is 3a over a squared over x minus 1 over a over x minus 1. OK? So what I told you is to multiply by the LCD of every little fraction to make things disappear. Well, let's look at this. I need to take care of that numerator first, because the numerator is a fun fraction all by itself. I'm going to leave the denominator the way it is until I simplify the numerator. So the LCD for the numerator is x. So that's an over 1. That's an over 1. Multiply every little fraction in the numerator by x. Cancel out what you can cancel. And then figure out what you've got left here. Well, I have a 3ax over the a squared minus x. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to do this, this. Take care of the denominator. Well, the lowest common factor in the, de, the lowest common divisor in the denominator is x. So I'm going to end up with 3ax over a squared minus x here. Multiply this times x over x, and I get a minus x. I multiply this one by... I actually, I'm just doing the addition, so this one has to be x over x. So I get a minus x over x. Now let's look at what my LCD is. 
that's my LCD is going to be x squared minus x times x, or a squared minus x times x. So a squared minus x times x, a squared minus x times x. Cancel out what you can cancel. And then do the multiplication. 3x times x is 3ax squared. Factored form, a minus x times a squared minus x. And that would be my final answer, provided that x is not equal to 0. So if you have a complex fraction that makes up part of another complex fraction, take it, take it, do one step at a time to eliminate your complex fractions. And our final example. The final example appears a lot in electricity type problems. Uh, you know, the, the math that we're going to do, electricity type problems. Simplifying things that have um, distances, stuff like that. My problem is 1 over 2x minus 3 minus 1 over 2x plus 3 all over 1 over 2x minus 1 over 2x plus 3. I want to find the LCD. The LCD is each factor that appears to the highest power that it appears anywhere in my little fractions. So I have a 2x minus 3. I have a 2x plus 3. And I have a 2x. This 2x plus 3 is already taken into account with the first one there. Now I want to multiply every little fraction by that LCD. So I have 2x times 2x minus 3 times 2x plus 3. 2x, 2x minus 3, 2x plus 3. 2x. 2x minus 3, 2x plus 3, and 2x, 2x minus 3, 2x plus 3. Cancel so you no longer have any little fractions. The 2x minus 3s go. These 2x plus 3s go. 2x's are gone, and the 2x plus 3s are gone. I no longer have any little fractions. Now what I want to do is I need to multiply everything out in my numerator, multiply everything out in my denominator, combine like terms, factor and simplify. 2x times 2x, 4x squared. 2x times 3, 6x. Negative 4x squared. Negative times a negative is plus 6x. So a negative 2x times 3 is a plus 6x. Denominator. Difference of square patterns. 4x squared minus 9. Then I'm going to subtract 4x squared. And then, then I have a negative 2x times a positive 3, which is going to be 6x. Combining like terms in the numerator. 4x, minus 4, 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. 6x plus 6x is 12x. 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. Then I have a 6x minus 9. Factor out the denominator. 
So I have 12x over 3 times x minus 3. 12, uh, 12, 3 goes into 12 four times. So I have 4x over x minus 3. But I now have some restrictions. Everything I crossed off here that still does not appear here, I have to take into account. x not equaling 3 halves. x not equaling negative 3 halves. And x not equaling 0. So this original complex fraction simplified is 4x over x minus 3, provided that x is not equal to plus or minus 3 halves, or x is not equal to 0. You're going to see in the next lecture, which is on what's called the difference quotient, that a lot of times we're going to solve the difference quotient, you may end up with these complex fractions in order to simplify the difference quotient. So again, Practice these. Make sure you can factor and find the LCDs. If you need help, make sure to come in and ask me for help on finding these LCDs of all these little fractions.